All right, so uh, we're going to do a quick hardware overview of uh, what comes in the Corsair Link kit. Now, there's actually two different uh, kits. There's the Corsair Link cooling kit, and then there's the Corsair Link lighting kit. Um, currently, you can buy either just the cooling kit, or you can get a combo kit that has both the cooling kit and the lighting kit. Uh, to my knowledge, the lighting kit cannot be purchased separately. So starting off... Um, I don't have anything actually installed in the case. It's all I'm just testing it right now, so it's kind of just hanging out right now. But this is the uh, this is the the Corsair Link Commander. So this is what you will connect all the other components within the Link to. Um, this guy connects directly to uh, the f a nine pin header in on a USB header on your motherboard, and uh, doesn't require any external power. So it's just the uh, just the USB header on that guy. And then from there, you're going to plug in your various components. So uh, first off, we have a uh, Corsair a control node or a fan node. And so this is what you'll plug your, your fans into. And so you can see I actually have uh, a, quite a few different fans in, so it's actually being able to power all those, no problem. I have uh, right here, I have my radiator fans on the top. There's three fans there. Uh, this is, this is the, look, the case fan here next to the hard drive. This is uh, two fans on the top on a, in a push pull configuration, so actually four fans. If you combine combine these two here, on the bottom radiator here, and uh, this is a, t a temperature uh, sensor that's actually an in inline sensor for my liquid cooling loop, so it can measure. Uh, it, it comes with a set of sensors as well for those type of uses. Um, next up, we have the Corsair lighting kit here, and so this plugs in. They have these RGB. Um, LED light strips that uh, can cycle between all the different colors and can pulse like it's doing now and uh, are all customizable. So now we'll hop over to the, the actual software to see how these things work to control your, the, uh, the fans and the lighting within your system. Alright, so this is the uh, Corsair Link software. Um, Currently, let's go here, I'll show you what, what version I'm running. Um, I think it's version 1.2.7. And uh, these are the different firmwares I'm running. So for the Corsair Commander, it's 1.1.9. For the Cooling Node, 1.2.5. And for the Lighting Node, 1.1.9. Now I had to update my Cooling Node firmware because before it wasn't, uh, the fans were not spinning down at all. They were running at 100% the entire time, no matter what configurations I selected. So very important to update the, update the firmware um, on the Corsair uh, forums. Uh, it can be found there. So starting off, uh, when you first load up the software, um, all these different uh, readouts here are going to be stacked over here on the side of the software interface. And so you pretty much just cherry pick what you want and you place them um, in the location uh, of, you know, of where it would be roughly in your case. Now this is an 800D image because that's the case I have, but you can right click here, change some image and they have their, their lineup of different cases or just some generic configurations you can choose from. Um, so I dragged over, uh, I have my CPU temp, uh, my three graphics cards, um, hard drive temperatures, Lic again that, that sensor I showed earlier, that liquid temp sensor is right there. Uh, those I have some LED strips here and here and then the various uh, radiator fans. So I have my radiator fans up here that corresponds to uh, the top radiator and the, my push-pull fans which are down here at the bottom. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do once you get them all you know, located where you want, want uh, you go to groups, the groups tab here and this is how you are going to make the correlation between certain temperature sensors and the fans that will will be controlled based on that temperature. So as you can see at the top, I have one of my GPUs, um, well, two of my GPUs here. So I, I was able to pull the push-pull fans over into this section. You can see it's it's just drag and drop. It's very easy to uh, maneuver the different the different parts back and forth. So um, what my push fans are based off this graphics card. My pull fans are based off this one. Uh, my CPU has a different set of fans on it. The uh, top rate radiator fans are based off the CPU. And then I have my case fan here based off a of hard drive temp. Um, I also have the two S, uh, SMB or I'm sorry LED lighting strips, uh, which we can also configure based on on system temperature if you choose to do so. So once you have um, your your links set up where you can you know link your temperatures with your 
components you can go back to system and now you can actually get into the customization of controls so uh, right now if I click on my, my top radiator fans uh, here you can you can rename uh, the fan bank to be whatever it needs to be and you can rename all this so if you want to rename it says CPU temp 1 you can put whatever you want it's it's all customizable there so um, you can see they have some different options here they have low noise which is uh, kind of a custom curve where they're going to kind of treat, keep things as quiet as possible balance, high performance again the curve just changes uh, based on the needs there uh, there's a max RPM which is what it, I think what it actually comes set at uh, when it when you first open up the link software so everything's revved up nice and high fixed RPM if you just want to have it set at a certain RPM throughout the entire operation or right here which is uh, the most customizable which is the custom control curve so with this you um, are utilizing the groups we already set forward I can specify okay well when my CPU hits these temperature thresholds I want my RPMs to uh, be at these corresponding levels and as you can see now so right now my CPU is running around 30 degrees Celsius uh, which is right around 900 RPM and uh, is about what it's reading right now so it's doing its job there um, I also went through and did the same thing with the radiator fan since I had those based off my graphics card temperature readings uh, for some reason this one's doing just fine I have it uh, at a fixed RPM just trying out a different setting but this other fan bank uh, for some reason, even at that same setting, as you can see here, it's reading out at 1500 RPM versus 1000. So I'm not sure what's causing that. Um, I know for a fact that those fans function properly because I've used other fan controllers and they're, they register just fine at, at, at various speeds. So it could just be a glitch in the software, but uh, can't explain that. Uh, this one is, uh, again, I just did a fixed, fixed RPM. Based off the hard drive, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about temperature curves on a, on a hard drive. Um, the other cool thing, so I mean, that's that's basically how you can, you can customize your fans with the system. Um, now it does come, this one does come with the lighting kit. So uh, based on the lighting kit, there's a few different options you have. Again, I I uh, linked this one in the group mode with my CPU temp. So under normal operation, uh, it's just going to pretty much stay uh, whatever color you specify. You can choose the option to pulse, which I don't know if you can tell on the side over here, but it is uh, pulsing dimmer and brighter. And I actually have it set about halfway brightness, so if I crank it up, you'll really see the, the dimming effect um, happen in the lights there. Now, obviously, this is fully customizable, so you can do, you know, you've got a, you got a purple, you got red. We'll do a nice green here. So, very customizable as far as, like, color combinations and whatnot. Um, the other option you have is cycling, where it will cycle between two different colors. Well, actually, it looks like you can do lots of different colors. So you can do some pretty neat cycling stuff here. So let's get it to go blue, gr uh, red, green, then black is off. So when it does black, it goes completely off. Which you'll see here in a sec. So, yep, there it goes. And then there's also the temperature cycling. So this one's, again, linked to my CPU. So as these different temperatures um, are, the thresholds are hit, the colors will cycle based off that. So I'll go ahead and run a quick little instance of Prime 95 here. There we go. Alright, so as I run Prime 95 in the background, you see the temperature spike and it immediately goes to... <laughs> so let me let me alter this just a tad. Let's go up here a bit. We'll set that around like 39. And you'll see the, the color change happen a bit in here. And if I stop, if I stop the uh, the thread, so it, the temperature drops back down, it'll immediately go back down towards the other colors we specified. So overall, it's a pretty uh, pretty decent uh, piece of software. It does have a few bugs in it, and a few it's lacking in a few features uh, compared to some of the other competitors out there. But it is fairly new. I think it's less than a year old at this point, and uh, each firmware release seems to to fix some bugs and to maybe you know add a few new features and whatnot, so it is coming along. All of course, there's uh, some of their current products and a lot of all their future products, especially their you know their sealed water cooling systems, uh, along with their digital power supplies, will work with this software as well. So you'll see even more control um, scenarios possible, you know, scenarios with with uh, new products and new 
updates in the software. So as it stands right now, it's it's uh, it works well. It's easy to use, and it does what it's supposed to. Um, there are a few bugs apparently still, but uh, they're they're constantly releasing new firmware updates, and we're seeing uh, better performance as as they do that. So um, that's the Corsair link, and thanks for watching the video.